In this lesson, we're continuing our exploration of the area of composite figures. Now we're looking at shaded regions. So a shaded region could be used to identify really any shape. It could be for regular and irregular shapes. As you see on the left, we have something similar to what you've already practiced. But on the right, you see that if we were to cut that into a bunch of smaller shapes, that would be pretty confusing. So instead, we're going to find the area of the larger shape and then subtract the area of the smaller shape. So let's take a look at this irregular shape. So again, we can break this up into many simple shapes or we could take the area of the larger rectangle and then subtract the area of the parallelogram that's not shaded. In other words, it's missing. So the area of a rectangle, we apply the formula, base times height, and we get an area for the rectangle of 558 millimeters squared. The area of the parallelogram, again, base times height, and we find that to have an area of 78 millimeters squared. So now to find the area of the shaded region, we're going to subtract. We take the area of the rectangle, the shaded region, we subtract the area that is not shaded, which is the parallelogram, and we get an area for the shaded region only of 480 millimeters squared. Now looking in this example, we see we could break this into two triangles. However, we weren't given any dimensions that would allow us to do this. So we have to find the area of the larger trapezoid and then subtract the area of the triangle that is not shaded. In other words, that's the piece that's missing. So the area of the trapezoid, again, applying the formula, one half of the two bases added times the height, substitute in what we know, and we have an area of the trapezoid of 195 feet squared. The area of the triangle, that's the section that's missing or not shaded, formula one half base times height and we have an area of 60 feet squared. So now the area of the shaded region again we take the area of the trapezoid we subtract the area of the triangle and we get the area of the shaded region to be 135 feet squared. Now this one's not much more complicated but take a look at the dimensions particularly right here on the bottom. Okay, so to find the base of the triangle, well, let's actually first look at the rectangle. That's pretty easy. We just see that we have a base and a height, 20 and then 12 inches. But now if we look at the triangle, we see that we're not given the dimension of the base. However, we're given the dimensions of the two sections right next to it on either side. So to find the base of the rectangle, we're gonna to have to subtract those two eight inch lengths from the overall length as we see in the top of the rectangle, which is 20. So after subtracting, we see we now have the base for the non-shaded triangle to be four inches. From there, it's just like any of the others. We find the area of the rectangle using base times height to be 240 inches squared. The area of the triangle, again, one half base times height using the base that we just calculated. And we have an area of 12 inches squared. So to find the area of the shaded region, just as before, we're going to subtract area of rectangle minus area of triangle. And we get 226 inches squared. Okay, 